YouTube. YouTube. We are live on YouTube. We're about to go live on other platforms. So hang tight if you guys are joining us on YouTube. All right. All right. Facebook. Facebook is going live now. So we've got YouTube live. We've got Facebook live. We've got Instagram going right now. So if you guys are jumping on the call right now, uh, hang out for a minute. We're going to turn everything on. And then uh, we're going to uh, answer a lot of questions. So my goal today is to help you feel better in your body during this call. So if you have aches, pains, injuries, you wanna know the best way to work out, whatever it may be, I'm gonna answer as many questions as I possibly can on this call to help you get the best results possible. So hang tight, we are live on YouTube, we are live on Facebook, we are live on Instagram now, I think, right? Or TikTok, almost there, we're working on it, okay. Hang tight, y'all. We're gonna we're gonna get it set up and going. And I got a question posted in here, but the thing you can do right now TikTok. is if you do have questions, post them in the comments right now. We're gonna have somebody from our team pull them out of the comments and put them in this doc right here. I'm gonna start answering questions to help you feel better in your body. Hello, TikTok. I just got a thumbs up. We're live on TikTok and Instagram too. Uh, yes. All right. Now we're live on everybody. Okay. So. Welcome to the call, anybody from YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. We're doing a live call today, and I'm gonna be here answering any question you have on how to feel better in your body. So, you know, this can be anything from, you know, I, I have an achy knee when I squat, how do I change that around? Or like a plantar fasciitis, or hey, what's the best thing to eat? Or hey, I, I can't stay, stay consistent, how do I do that? So any questions you have right now, I wanna encourage you to post them in the comments right now, and someone from our team is gonna grab them from the comments, and put them in this document, and I'm gonna rip through these questions and try to answer as many as possible in the next you know, 30, 45 minutes, okay? Now, the reason why we're doing this call isn't just to help you feel better, but we are celebrating something big. We're about to launch our first 30-day Feel Better Challenge. Now, this is a challenge where we're gonna give you follow-along workouts that are personalized just for you for 30 full days, as well as live calls just like this, only it's gonna be more like a Zoom format where you can kind of unmute, you can actually talk to each other eye to eye, I'm gonna be in there with a bunch of other community members as well. And the goal is to get you as active as possible so that you can feel better at the end of the 30 days. We're gonna give away a bunch of prizes and stuff like that as well. So to get you guys posting in the comments right now, something I'm gonna do here is this. I'm gonna say, the person from our team who's going through and collecting all the different uh, questions, I'm gonna empower them to choose at random three people, three people from all these different platforms, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. And at the end of this call, I'm gonna tell you who you are, who they chose, and I'm gonna give you free entry into the 30 day feel better challenge, all right? So that means you gotta post a question if you want that free entry right there, and you gotta stick around, otherwise we can't connect with you, okay? So if you have those questions, post them in there right now, otherwise I'm gonna get started and we'll rock it. And also, by the way, sorry, if you're interested in the challenge and you don't end up being one of those people, you can go to weshape.com backslash challenge and you can check out that page for more information. It is starting next week, okay? We got a link. Oh yeah, weshape.com backslash challenge. All right, cool. Let's go there if you guys wanna check it out. Um, I'm gonna answer the first question. If you guys have questions, post them below. Like I said, somebody's gonna pick out some names at random and give you guys a free entry to the challenge. So, um, we had an SI joint pain video that was on uh, various platforms that went really big. Connor, how many views did that get? Did they get like a million or something like that? Yeah. So that, that video got like over a million views and uh, we had a follow-up question to it. So first I wanna show you the SI joint pain stretch and then I'll show you the answer to the follow-up question. So a lot of people have pain in their SI joint which is this joint right back here on your hip, right? It's where the spine meets the hip. A ton of nerves go through there and so when that isn't, when that's compacted or inflamed, it can cause a lot of issues in your lower body, even in your upper body at the same time. So one of my favorite ways to handle SI joint pain issues is to decompress the SI joint. So I'm gonna show you how to do it by flipping around on my back right here. So what you'll wanna do is lay down on your back, get a chair or a couch, anything right in front of you, and you can put a little pillow if you need to, like this little pillow right here underneath my knees. The goal is to have it so it feels like someone's almost pulling up on your legs a little bit, okay? So if they're pulling up on your legs a little bit, you want that little bit of tension right there, okay? From there, you just wanna lengthen your spine, so walk your shoulder blades out and then lengthen through the top of your head, and then just find a good place and relax. I mean, literally, if you have SI joint pain and you're watching this live video right now, why don't you flip over on your back, lay down, hold your phone or your tablet up like this, and you can watch the rest of this video while decompressing your SI joint, okay? This is a great stretch and position to sit in for you know, anywhere from like five minutes to like 30 minutes, and you'll be surprised afterwards by just tractioning your hip and creating space inside your hip 
you can decompress that part of your body and it will make it feel significantly better. So that was the exercise I showed on that, that video that went pretty viral. Um, but this was a follow-up question. And they said, do you have another stretch for SI joint pain? I'm pregnant and I can't lie on my back. So really, really great question and a really great reason why you can't lie down on your back. So again, SI joint, it, it runs through the hip right here. And oftentimes it can be associated with really tight glutes or really tight hip flexors. So let me show you my two favorite stretches that you can do fairly easily to loosen up the hip flexors and the glutes, okay? First, I'm gonna bring one leg across the knee like this. This is called a figure four stretch, okay? Now if that's too hard for you too, you can straighten that leg and you can bring that leg further down. If you need to, you can put a towel over it. The whole point is you want to externally rotate your thigh and then the next step is to lean forward towards your foot, okay? So uh, you wanna bring it up as high as you can lean forward towards your foot. I don't want you thinking about rounding your back like this because we're not stretching our upper back. The goal is to stretch our hip and how you stretch your hip is by bringing your foot closer to your chest, okay? So this is a really good stretch. The more you bend that other leg, the more it's gonna bring it closer to you and the more you're gonna feel it deep in that glute. Now I'm gonna follow up with one thing here is hold that position for you know 60 to 90 seconds on the right side. Then I always like to tell people when you're doing stretches, kind of like feel the difference. Like I just took my leg down and wow, this side feels a lot looser and better than this side. And then make sure you stretch the other side, right? And uh, you know, this, this, this particular person said that they were pregnant and asked this question. So just in case uh, you can't put your foot across and do this because your belly's in the way, you can always just grab your foot in front of you and bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up as high as you possibly can. And if that's still not an option, you can always use like a couch or a chair, come into that figure four position like this so there's a lot of space in front of you and come down and forward like this and you're still gonna get that good stretch through the outside of your hip. So really important to stretch those glutes, those external rotators. It's really important when they're loose, the SI joint has much less likelihood of being impacted. All right, looks like we've got a bunch of questions popping in here now, which is good. So again, if you guys haven't posted a question, post a question below. Somebody from our team is gonna grab that question, toss it in here, and at the end of this live call, we're gonna pick three people at random to get free entry into the We Shape 30 day feel better challenge, right? And if you don't wanna post a question, just check out weshape.com backslash challenge and there's more information there. We're starting the challenge next week. So make sure you get on board. It's gonna be really fun, all right? Um, plus the person who engages the most in the challenge gets these raffle tickets. We're gonna raffle off coaching with me one-on-one. -on -one, so it'll be kind of a fun thing to do. All right, next question is, uh, what is the best exercise stretch in the morning for sore neck and shoulder with pain radiating down the arm, okay? I love questions like this. Sometimes I wish I could have more follow-ups and stuff, but uh, so oftentimes, um, if you have pain radiating down the arm, there is going to be uh, a compaction in your vertebrae. So somewhere between your, your upper back right here and the top of your neck, one of your discs or your spine is either compacted or it's angled like this, right? And when that happens, the, the discs push together and they pinch the nerves. And when they pinch the nerves, it manifests as muscle weakness, tingling, pains and sensations in the arms and things like that. So if you're waking up and you have a tight, stiff, sore neck, I'm gonna show you a couple neck stretches you can do right now. The real key here is don't do a stretch that makes the pain worse because ultimately what you really, really want in the neck or the spine in general, you want length, right? So one of the most important things to be mindful of is throughout your day, as you're sitting, don't sit like this, with your head forward and head rounded forward like this. See, this just creates a really bad curve in the neck. Instead, try to be conscious throughout the day and think about pressing your head to the sky. It's very simple, just think about tall to the top of the head, right? You ever see those old movies where they used to put a book on someone's head to like improve their posture? That actually works, right? Because you have to really lengthen your spine and stay nice and steady as you're doing that motion. So, um, tall to the top of the head, standing, sitting, when you're going to bed all the time, just trying to reset that posture because there's these little muscles in between the uh, vertebrae called the multifidus and they pull the next one up so it creates space inside the spine. So it's good to practice that. Now if you want some stretches, here's my favorites, okay? First one is a side stretch of your neck. So you wanna take your hand. If you're on a chair, you can grab underneath the chair. If, if you're just on the ground or whatever, you can just put your hand underneath your leg. The point is you wanna anchor this arm down, okay? From there, you're gonna slowly lean to the side, but the big key touch here is don't just like crumple your neck towards the ground, right? Think about lifting your face toward the sky. When you do that, you'll find a deeper stretch all the way through your neck muscles right here. Now from there, take a couple deep breaths and relax. 
And if you want to, you can put your hand on top of your head like this, and you can start pulling down a little bit, not too hard, right? Just enough to generate a little bit of tension in the neck where you have to like kind of push back against your hand. Take a big breath in. And then as you exhale, just let your ear come to that shoulder and really stretch out the side of the neck there. Gosh, that can feel absolutely amazing. Oh, that's a good one. Now again, feel it out. How does that feel on that side versus that side? I don't know about you, but this side feels great. <laughs> this side feels all pinched up. I don't really like it. So um, stretch the other side. Do that, do that uh, on the other side as well. Uh, hold this for 30 to 60 seconds. Try to do it once a day. See if that loosens up the neck muscles around your neck right there. And again, try to maintain that tall posture. I'm gonna give you one more for the neck because it's really neglected. You can take your hands, you can clasp it behind your neck like this, okay? And what you can do is pull your chin towards your chest. Now what I don't want you to do is this. I don't want you just to crumple forward like this. I want you to think about lifting the back of your neck toward the sky. So as your chin goes towards your chest, the back of your neck goes up. So you might not even need to go that far forward to feel a stretch right back here. And then from there, I want you to open your arms and lift your head up like this. Again, face toward the sky. So back of the head toward the sky, face toward the sky. You can kind of use your hands to help guide that up. So try those different things. Good posture, side stretches each side, the down stretch, the up stretch, and see how that makes your body feel. If you do those in the morning especially, I think it's gonna be really, really helpful for um, loosening up the muscles and increasing the length in your spine that's probably causing the pinch on those nerves. Now, uh, something I should probably say right now, which uh, all the people always tell me to say, is uh, I'm not your doctor. Our lawyers would hate it if I give too much advice. So everything I'm saying today, check against it, your doctor and all that stuff, you know, you know, don't, don't make any mistakes, okay? All right, listen to your body, that's really important. Okay, I'm gonna go on to the next question here. Again, if you're just joining the call right now, post a question in the comments below. We're gonna pull it out of there, toss it up in this sheet. My goal is to help as many people as I can right now feel better in your body. Doesn't matter what the question is about exercise, nutrition, um, what's my favorite color, right? Go ahead and post it below. And by the way, at the end of the video, stick around because we're gonna take three people and we're gonna, I'm gonna shout their names out right here who are gonna get free entry to our 30 day feel better challenge, which is starting next week. We're gonna give you follow along workouts that are customized to you coaching calls just like this, but even more exclusive where we can talk face to face um, and access to our community and our other coaches is gonna be really awesome. So I really hope you check that out. If you don't make it in as one of the free um, challenge members, go ahead and type in weshape.com backslash challenge, check that out. Let's go to the next question. From Victor, how do you exercise to regain strength and endurance from COVID? Ooh, Victor, this question couldn't be more well-timed, my friend. Um, so truth be told, I actually ended up getting uh, COVID a few weeks back. And one of the things that you experience in COVID amongst many other things is a decrease in these energy levels and particularly your lung capacity. So you might be out there, say you're somebody who does uh, you know, running or something cardiovascular, and all of a sudden you do it again and you're just like, <gasps> you just can't breathe, you don't have the energy, right? And I think the biggest thing um, is to give yourself a, a lot of grace and patience. Don't push yourself too hard, but also to really start strengthening your body's ability to take in oxygen and utilize it during your workouts. So this might be a little counterintuitive to what you expected, but I've personally found that doing breathing exercises is one of the best ways to regain energy, strength, and stamina after having COVID. So I'll show you a simple breathing exercise that you can try at home, okay? Um, I'm only gonna do it for a minute or so, but I would really encourage you to do this for maybe about 10 minutes, which would be about three rounds and I think it'll really help strengthen your lungs. So here's how this is gonna work. First, I want you to have awareness of where you're breathing because if you're just breathing into your chest the whole time, you're not gonna open up the lungs and increase that lung capacity. So the first thing I always tell people to do, I'll stand up for this one and get a little bit closer. I'll say, put one hand on your belly, one hand on your chest, and let's just take a couple deep breaths into the belly. So into the belly, exhale out like that. Now, don't worry about the chest necessarily moving, but what we don't wanna do is this. When we breathe into our chest, we activate our sympathetic nervous system. This is the fight or flight side of your nervous system. And guess what? When you get COVID, you activate your sympathetic nervous system, the fight or flight side. So what we wanna do is activate the parasympathetic side, which means breathing into our belly, the rest and digest side of our nervous system. So inhale into the belly, exhale like that, okay? So remember, we're breathing into our belly as we do these breathing exercises. Now these are not passive, simple breathing exercises. These are active breathing exercises. So what you're gonna do is breathe into your belly as much air as possible, then take a little bit more than you thought you could, and then exhale, and then repeat the process. So I'm gonna do 
10 reps with you at home, I want you to do 30 to 50 reps, and then I want you to relax at the end of the last exhale, and then when you feel like taking another breath in, start breathing real relax, and then repeat it three times, okay? Another great resource for this is called the Wim Hof Method which has been proven to increase your immune response to things like COVID, and it can also help improve your lung capacity, which is amazing because when they did a huge study on what one attribute helps people live the longest, it wasn't how cardiovascular you, you were able to hit with your exercises or how much strength or your diet or anything, it was your lung capacity. So breathing is always the foundation of anything I try to teach people. So follow along, let's do 10 or 15 breaths, and then I'll, I'll walk you through one more time how to do it at home. So, Big breath in, and then exhale. Big breath in, all the way in, exhale. Big breath in, right, follow along. Belly first, chest second. Couple more. One more big one, and then let it out and just relax for a second, don't take a breath in. <sighs> and just see how you feel after that. Woo! Not only do you feel absolutely amazing, more centered, more calm, more relaxed, that's your parasympathetic nervous system coming online, your sympathetic nervous system leaving the room, and you feeling significantly better. Now, do that, try that out. Try 30 to 50 times of a breath, and at the end you might start to feel a little tingly, a little weird sensations in your body, and afterwards just let the last breath out, hang out, until you feel like you need to take that next breath, and then take a little breath in, and then do that again, and try to hit it, I'd say at least two to three times, right? Take you about 10 minutes, okay? And if you do this every single day, not only are you gonna boost your immune system up, but you're gonna improve your body's ability to actually utilize oxygen, and the next thing you're gonna do is go out and hit your workout, you're gonna feel a lot better again. This is a game changer for me, so um, give it a shot, see how it feels, but I really think it's a good one for anybody who's experiencing any uh, lack of energy or anything like that. Okay, let's jump in the next one. Okay, can you show more of the elevator breathing? Woo! This is from Deb, by the way. Hi, Deb. Um, the elevator, okay, so oftentimes when people start a fitness routine uh, and they work with a trainer or somebody who's a, a good instructor, they tell you you need to activate your core. We've probably all heard this, right? You're gonna go do some sort of exercise. Activate your core, activate your core. But nobody really understands what that means, okay? And so activating your core for a long time Trainers have talked about it being draw your belly button towards your spine. So again, from a side angle, what they're telling you to do is take your belly button right here and suck it into your spine because that activates a group of muscles called the transverse abdominis, which essentially act like an internal corset wrapped around your body. Now, while that's true, that sucking in can activate your transverse abdominis, it doesn't necessarily activate the other muscles that create stability in the core, which is what we really, really want when you're exercising, okay? So instead of sucking your belly button into your spine, what we recommend is something called the elevator. And the elevator can also be called bracing. Um, there's other different techniques that, that has been called that. But a very simple way to think of the elevator is if your belly button's right here and your hip's right here, I want you to take two fingers and put it in between your belly button and your hip there, and on the other side, in between your belly button and your hip right there, okay? So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna push those fingers in, and instead of using your breath, like you don't wanna go like this <gasps> to push your fingers out, instead of using your breath, Push your belly out like this, Ugh. right? So now I'm pushing my fingers out with the strength of all the muscles of my core creating stability, bracing my core, okay? Now this is a weird exercise because you don't really feel like you're doing that much. You're just pushing your fingers out. But I promise you, try to keep your fingers out while you take breath, while you talk, while you walk, while you move around, while you do your workout, and it becomes very difficult to maintain that core tension. And so the elevator is one of the most important exercises I think out there because it teaches you how to create core stability while you're doing anything in your daily life. If you feel like you're having a hard time getting those fingers to push out and stay or being able to take a breath while those fingers are pushed out, first of all, give yourself some grace. This is a, a motor pattern exercise, meaning we have to teach your body how to properly activate muscles that it's not used to activating. So it can feel really weird and difficult at first. So just give yourself some grace there. But a cool trick I like to use is to teach people to cough and hold the cough, okay? So again, fingers where I told you to push in, and then breath in, and then go <coughs> And you can't, you cannot cough without doing that, without activating those core muscles. So <coughs> hold that cough, and then try to take a little simple breath in through your nose. Hold the tension, and what you'll probably feel is 
tension, no tension, tension, no tension, tension, no tension. So again, be patient with this. It's a very difficult exercise to do, but the good news is if you learn how to do the elevator and, and activate your core properly, all of a sudden the, the risk of injuring your back goes away. Even things like the SI joint pain that we talked about in the beginning of this live call can be lessened or even fully eliminated because what you're doing is you're creating intra-abdominal pressure within the muscles that creates length in the spine and stability around the core. So you're just, you're just gonna be a lot res more resilient of a person and your whole body's gonna feel a lot better. So um, it's tricky, give yourself some, some grace on it. The elevator is a is tricky exercise, but man, is it such a great foundational exercise for learning how to do anything with less risk. All right, I'm gonna jump in the next uh, question here. Oh, I got a good question about something I already answered, which is really, really fun. I love doing that kind of stuff. So again, if you guys have any questions, post them in the comments. We're gonna go for a little bit longer. I can't see what time it is though. I have no idea what time it is. So Connor can throw his hands up when he hears me and tell me how long we got. 3.23. 3.23, okay, so we got at least like 20 more minutes, at least, okay? 20 more minutes of, of question answering. I'll try to go a little faster. I know I like to ramble and blamble the whole time I'm on these calls. So again, post your question in the comments. I'm gonna try to rip through these as fast as I can. We're gonna pick three people at the end, at random, who are going to get free access to our challenge. So stick around to the end of the call as well. And if you're just interested, you don't wanna post a question on the Feel Better Challenge, we're gonna give 30 days of follow along, personalized workouts, coaching, live calls just like this, but on a more intimate level where I can actually unmute you and, and talk to you. Go to weshake.com backslash challenge. I promise you're gonna love the workouts, all right? Okay, next question. I have tight hips and will try the figure four stretches and alternatives, but how can I increase my flexibility? What a great blanket question, okay? I'm gonna give you my favorite tip for increasing your flexibility. And then might as well just throw down a couple quick stretches just to help you um, uh, have something that you can work with on your daily life, okay? So the body, let's do the stretches first. The body really doesn't work in that many ways, right? So essentially every joint can either go, you know, side to side, up and down, or twist front and back like that. So every joint doesn't really have that much motion. And you know, with the legs, it's either we bring our legs really close to us or we bring our body towards our thighs with straight legs. So I'm gonna show you my favorite lower body stretches that you can do. There's two of them right here. First one is a squat stretch. So if you, if you need to, you can use a couch for support, but just gonna come into a squat as deep as you can. You can sit on the couch like this. If you feel a nice stretch in your groin, that's as far as you need to go and you can just work on opening the hips. From there, if you want to, you can put your hands behind you and you can start working your butt a little bit lower. Or if it feels better, you can bring your hands in front of you and you can drive your uh, knees out with your elbows. And the goal is just to sit in this squat position and slowly let your butt come down towards your heels and just hold for, you know, 30 seconds, a minute. You can do this throughout the day. You can do this, you know, once a day. You can do this five times a day. But just the, the squat, the rock bottom squat, just relaxing into a squat position is one of the best stretches you can do for just all around hip and lower body flexibility. And if you work on keeping your chest upright at the same time, it's really good for improving your posture too. So squat stretch is one stretch I would recommend. Another one is the classic front bend, okay? So this one's just gonna be weight on the heels, hinging forward through the hips. It doesn't matter if you're all the way up here and you feel a stretch in your hamstrings, or if you're, you know, your head's down to your knees and you feel a stretch in your hamstrings. Point is just hold this position, again, somewhere around a minute, and just breathe in, and every time you exhale, just try to relax. Big note here is that I think when people do this stretch, um, I'm okay with rounding the back a little bit, but don't try to round the back so much to get deeper. What you really wanna think about doing is bringing your belly button towards your thighs, not your forehead towards your knees. So keep thinking about belly button towards your thighs as you do this hamstring stretch. And then the last one is gonna be a downward dog. I'll show you an easier variation first though. Let me grab this chair over here. Um, so a downward dog starts with just having a chair like this. I like to go thumbs up if you can. Make sure the chair's sturdy, all right? I don't wanna be falling on my account, okay? And then you're gonna bring your, your butt back and your hips back. You know, you can have a soft bend in the knees, but you're trying to bring your chest towards the ground. So this is something, like how often in your daily life do you put your arms all the way over your head and really stretch out the lats and, and improve the posture? Almost never, right? So this downward dog is a really great stretch. Starting here, and then if that gets really easy to you, you can, you can ditch the chair and you can just do a regular downward dog, really focusing on the chest. So don't worry about the legs so much, but try to think about bringing the belly button towards the thighs, pressing the hands this way. And then if you want to, you can try to straighten the knees and then eventually drop the heels towards the ground as well, okay? So there's three stretches that are gonna cover a lot of the body very quickly. Squat stretch, front bend, and downward dog. If you do those three stretches consistently, you're gonna build a lot of flexibility very, very, very quickly. Now, the question was, how do I get more flexible? And so I'm gonna give you my favorite tip on flexibility. Almost everybody here looks at their phone, and you're probably looking at your phone right now, or watches TV or whatever, 
um, a very long time ago, I told myself, if I'm going to watch TV, I'm going to start out watching TV by stretching while I'm watching TV. And man, that was my secret to getting amazingly flexible. Even though I'm a big guy, right? I'm like 200 pounds. I'm six foot tall. Um, I don't look like I should be flexible, but then I can do, you know, I'm like totally cold right now. You know, I could jump into like a, almost a front split, you know, totally cold. And that, that comes from just years and years and years of uh, consistently stretching. So um, I'm a huge fan of it. Do it while you're watching TV or while you're, uh, you know, cruising around through, through Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or YouTube or whatever. And it'll make a huge difference on how your body feels because nobody stretches enough. It's so uncommon for me to meet somebody who actually takes enough time to just loosen up their body, right? So um, look for opportunities like watching TV to do your stretches, and I promise you will not regret it, okay? Okay, uh, from both Angie and Jill on Facebook. Oh, so we, have, we had two people ask the same question. I need help with balance, any tips? Oh man, I got a tip for you. This is my favorite balance uh, uh, tip I've ever given, okay? So I wish I had the toothbrush that we have here, but I'll get it next time. Um, you probably brush your teeth, right? Everybody? Has everybody on the call brush their teeth? Yeah, I hope so, okay? So here's the deal. Sometimes when you want to develop a skill like balance, but you don't necessarily want to um, work on you know, balance as a, an exercise in your daily life, you can marry something that's already a habit to something that you want to improve. So everybody brushes their teeth, right? Every single day, hopefully twice a day, and you want to improve your balance. Well, check this out. Put that toothpaste on, stand in front of the counter, use your fingertips for support, and for half the time you're brushing your teeth, balance on your left leg. And if you need to, you can, again, you can use that free hand for support if you need to. And then the other half of the time, balance on the opposite leg and brush your teeth again. I, I, was, I switched my hands, but you don't have to switch your hands if you don't want to on brushing the teeth. That might be a little too confusing. Um, but here's the deal. While you're doing it, if you need to use your hands for support and you're brushing your teeth, start with all five fingers. And then how you make progress is you pick the thumb up, then you pick the pinky up, then you pick the ring finger up, then you pick the middle finger up, then you pick the index finger up, and then you're fully balanced. Now I promise you, if you brush your teeth for two minutes and you're balancing for one minute on your right foot and one minute on your left foot every day, or maybe even twice a day, your balance is going to improve really, 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 really fast. So that's a cool trick um, uh, where you can basically marry in a habit that you already have to something you want to improve on at the same exact time so you don't have to like add anything to your life and you can actually build a, a better habit around you know, improving something like this balance trick right here. So give that a shot. Every time you brush your teeth, balance for half the time on your right foot, half the time on your left foot, go slow, give yourself some grace, like I keep saying, right? Um, if it took you however old you are to lose your balance, give yourself a little bit of time to gain it back, if you know what I'm saying, okay? Um, but that's a good one. Um, I think a lot of people have had um, really, really great success practicing that and improving their balance. And once you can balance on one foot, um, your balance overall is gonna be significantly better because uh, when you balance on one foot, you're not just balancing forward and backwards, you're having to manage the side to side movement of the body and the rotational movement of the body. So it's really, you know, balancing on one foot is balance at the end of the day. Um, okay, Woo! if you guys are enjoying this video, give us a like, uh, you know, share this feed with your friends if they're interested in getting their questions answered too. And if you have any more questions, post them in the comments. Remember, we're about 10, 15 minutes away from me telling you who the three people are. So. Connor or Helen, let's like start combing through there and see if we can pick some, some people who are posting comments, right? We can post them up on the screen and we'll get ready to, to let people know who's, uh, who's, who's gonna get the free entry to the challenge. And if you guys wanna check out our Feel Better Challenge, it starts May 25th, which is next week, but you gotta sign up before then. So go to weshape.com backslash challenge. You're gonna get follow along, personalized workouts with our new technology. It's really awesome, it gives you follow along personalized workouts where we check in with you after each exercise and we adjust the difficulty based on your actual capabilities. Um, we're gonna give you access to our community. We've got uh, thousands of, of people in that community right now who are there supporting each other. We have coaches in there supporting them as well. And then also live calls like this and a chance to win some really cool prizes. So check that out, I promise it's gonna be awesome. All right, let's do another one. Nancy on TikTok, do you have an exercise for the knees because I have, uh, that has bone on bone to strengthen and reduce pain. Okay, so uh, I think that you're saying you have bone on bone pain in the knees and they cause a lot of pain. Uh, Nancy, I've got some empathy for you like you wouldn't believe. Um, I literally had a knee surgery, I think it was seven months ago or eight months ago now. And uh, it was because I had bone on bone pain, right? I had, my meniscus was smashed down, my ACL was gone. But here's the cool thing. While I didn't have very much stability in my knee, 
I was still able to do a lot of stuff in daily life, and that's because exactly what you're asking, how do you get strength in there even though there's a little bit of pain? So the, the, the most common thing I see people do, and it might be helpful for you to stand up and actually feel this if you're, if you're feeling this in your body. So anybody with knee pain, put your phone somewhere, your iPad somewhere, stand up for a second, right? If you do a squat and you feel pain in your knees, let's try to get rid of that pain right now, really quickly, okay? So here's how this is gonna look like. Most people, when they squat, they don't have a lot of awareness around which direction their knees are pointing in relevance to their toes. And oftentimes when people squat, their knees cave in like this. So if I sit down and I look at the direction of my femur, my thigh bone, and the direction of my toes, they're not aligned. They're going different directions. So the first thing is, as you squat, make sure that when you look down at your thigh, it's going the same direction as your toes. That will save so much knee pain, so many injuries in the long run, okay? Now the next thing is, Oftentimes, when people have poor knee integrity, what they do when they squat is they bring their knees in front of their toes first, and then they bring their butt down like this. Now, the moment your center of gravity, when I bring my knees in front of my toes, my center of gravity lands in front of my toes like this, I put a lot of pressure on the front side of your knee. Now, that's not to say that the human body doesn't move like that. That's just saying you're not strong enough to move like that without pain yet. So what do I recommend? When you squat, Put your weight 90% in your heels. Like literally, you want to feel like you're about to tip over backwards. Again, please, nobody tip over backwards, right? 90% on the heels. And then what I want you to do is this. Bow forward like you're going to bow to somebody while still keeping your chest up. Push that butt back. Come down slowly. Keep those knees back behind the toes, okay? So don't let those knees come forward like this. Keep those knees back as you come down. Go as deep as you can. Still 90% of the weight in the heels. And then press through the heels. And what you're going to feel is your butt and your hamstrings are working really, really hard instead of your quads, which is gonna activate the, the, the patellar tendon that runs across the knee joint, okay? So again, weight in the heels, butt back, knees going the same direction as the toes, and then extend the hips as you stand up. And when you do this versus this, where your knees are in, your knees are forward like that, if you take your time and practice just a basic squatting movement, you're gonna notice, wow, I can do this without pain it's probably gonna be significantly less painful. And then be really patient. It's very difficult when you have uh, an injury like this inside your body because, um, how do I put this? Um, if you do too much, you get inflammation. If you don't do anything, you never build strength. So there's this balancing act between doing enough to produce a little bit of progress, but not so much that you have to take you know, two steps back on your one step forward, okay? So be patient with yourself, right? And even if you need to, you can do that same squatting technique of keeping your weight back, but you could put your hands on your knees and use support like this and really just build that ability to do a basic squatting movement and then eventually take your hands away and do these sit-to-stands and then eventually on the sit-to-stands, you can go up on your toes and increase the speed and then you'll be able to add a little hop to it and all the while you're building the ability to move your body better because remember this, and I say this, try to say this in all the videos, moving better is feeling better, all right? Never forget that. If you wanna feel better in your body, you need to move better. It's not about the number on the scale, right? That doesn't define you. How you feel when you're moving your body, that's what you'll really notice. And that's what we're after at WeShape, is making you feel better in your body. Okay, let's go on to a couple more. Um, Stretch for my sciatica. So we already did a couple of sciatica stretches here, but I can always throw down more glute stretches if you guys want to. So um, here's another one. I showed you guys the figure four stretch where you bring your leg across the body. Now here's another cool way to approach this, is instead of keeping this knee out and bringing your chest towards your foot, you can also hug your knee towards your chest, okay? So if this stretch, if you're doing this stretch and you don't feel a stretch in the outside of the hip, you can take the same side arm as the leg is bent and you could hug that knee, and you could hug it with the other arm, and you could pull it towards your chest as you rotate this direction, and then you're gonna feel an even deeper stretch all the way through the hip and the glute. And you could do this sitting on the ground, you could do this sitting on a couch, and again, it doesn't have to be very high, maybe your knee's only up to here like this, but this, holding that for, you know, like I said, a minute, minute and a half, and then as always, put that one down and go, ooh, how does, how does, how does this feel compared to that side? I, I like to do that because um, whenever you do that stretch, it feels really, really good. And when it feels really, really good, you'll go, oh, wow, I should do that on the other side because nobody wants to walk around all imbalanced like that. So there's another great way to stretch the glutes, kind of open up the hips, but also you can go back to the beginning of the live call. We did some SI joint stretches there as well. Okay, whoo, I need a sip of water real quick, so bear with me. We got a couple more questions uh, I'm gonna hit today. Um, as always, remember that we are hosting a 
reshape.com backslash challenge. Go to that website. We're hosting a 30 day feel better challenge. So if you've been, um, you know, putting off starting your workout program, or maybe you're doing it, you know, once a week or, or hit or miss or whatever, and you want to get yourself the motivation and the community and the workouts that will help you feel better in your body, then this is your chance right now. Okay. Seriously, check it out. You know, we've got, I think we have a, a, a money back guarantee on the thing too. So if you want to sign up and you get in the middle of it and you're like, I hate this, then just ping us. We'll give you all your money back. It's not a big deal. What I want to do is make sure that you give yourself an opportunity to feel better because if you don't take action on something towards your goals, you will never reach your goals. You got to do something about it. Okay. Sip of water. I'm going to answer a couple more questions and then we're going to wrap this up. Um, so again, uh, thank you guys so much for joining this call. Uh, if you have, maybe, maybe there'll be enough time. I'll just sneak one more question in here and let's, uh, let's start picking out our people who we're going to give a free, uh, free access to the challenge to, and uh, we'll post them on the screen. I'll, I'll do maybe one or two more questions and then we'll do that. All right. Mm. Ah. Oh man. You know, what's funny. They just keep putting the disclaimer up there. I'm not your doctor. Ask your doctor. <laughs> I'm just trying to help. Okay. Okay, so I'm from, so from Deborah and Loretta on Facebook. Best exercise for plantar fasciitis. Okay, plantar fasciitis. Um, this one is an interesting one because the number one thing I would recommend for plantar fasciitis is rest, okay? It is really important to rest your body when you have plantar fasciitis. If you just keep you know, running or hitting the pavement hard or whatever with it, and it, it will just likely never go away. Um, so we want to give your body a lot of rest to let the inflammation calm down so it doesn't turn into some sort of tendinosis or something that feels really uncomfortable. Now, if it's sporadic and what you really need is to strengthen the arches of your feet, then I saw Connor, you got me a piece of paper already. What a good guy. What a good guy. Um, we want to bring some awareness around how to create more of an arch in your foot. Now, this one might be like hard to see from all the way over there, but that's, I'm going to put the piece of paper down here and I'll describe it. I'll take my shoe off here too. Um, I'll take my, my shoe off, my, my sock off, but you can't make fun of me for having pink toenails. I have a four-year-old daughter that painted my toenails, okay? So, so don't make fun of me for that, all right? So put your foot down on the piece of paper, and what you want to do is just kind of let it go all the way down as flat as you can. And if you look at this edge of the paper right here, how it's kind of flat against the ground, what I want to do is I want to think about bringing the pad of my big toe towards my heel. Now, try not to overthink it. Um, all you want to do is try to mess around with positions of the foot until you can make the paper do this, right? Go boom, make the paper do that, and then relax. Make the paper scrunch up, and then relax. Make the paper scrunch up, and then relax. Make the paper scrunch up, and then relax. And what you notice is that as I scrunch the paper up, what I'm doing is I'm bringing this part of my foot closer to my heel, and I'm creating a nice arch in my foot. When you create that nice arch in your foot, you're activating the muscles that are supposed to be there to absorb shock, to walk, to run, to do all kinds of things like that. So it's, it's kind of like the elevator drill that we did earlier on the call, where you're learning how to activate your core. The feet, because we just stick them in these cushy shoes all day long, sometimes they forget how to do their job. And one of the best ways to get them to do their job is to get them to activate on a piece of paper like this. And also, if you guys have been watching the whole thing, um, uh, a couple people asked a question about balance. That's another great one for just strengthening the intelligence of the feet and the ability for the feet to do their job was brushing your teeth and standing on one foot and then switching halfway through. So developing that balance should really help. But again, don't forget to um, be patient with it. Uh, don't push it. If it hurts, don't do it. Um, oftentimes with uh, like inflammation issues like that, um, just a little bit of rest can make a huge difference, okay? All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna answer one more question for this live call. And then are we gonna, do we got some winners lined up? We're gonna pick a few? Yeah, maybe? We got some winners lined up? We're gonna pick a few? Almost, almost, okay, he's giving me the almost, all right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna toss that piece of paper out of the screen. Okay, I'm gonna do one more question, and then we're gonna talk about the three people who posted a comment who are gonna get free entry into the Feel Better Challenge. If you guys haven't checked it out yet, reshape.com backslash challenge. We're hosting a 30 day feel better challenge where our goal is to help you feel better in your body again. So if you've been putting off, you know, excuses to work out or whatever, to improve your, the way you feel in your body, um, don't put it off any longer. This could be the sign you need and the butt kicking you need to get yourself going the right direction. Okay. So last question. Uh, I've been, not been able to bounce back since I had my third and last baby. I'm wondering if your workouts can help me. Okay. I didn't make this up. Like I was doing that like it's some weird ploy. Um, so I'll just describe how I approach exercise 
and how I think that can help people um, who have had injuries, who feel like they're having a hard time bouncing back, or honestly, for people who feel like there's just not workouts out there for them. So um, this may be a little bit science-y, so bear with me for just a sec, but the workouts that we created over at WeShape are not like the workouts that you see out there. You know, there's a bunch of different apps and websites and things where they basically bring you a follow-along workout, and you follow along, and you pick your workout, and you follow along, um, and that's great. I'm super happy that there's a lot of companies out there that are helping people just get up and move their bodies. What I wanted to do with this is create a workout that actually was designed for you and that could adjust to your individual capabilities, goals, and availability in real time. And so what I think of is, as fitness is um, instead of worrying about how many calories we're burning or how hard we're sweating, I want to know how well can you move and how sophisticated of a motor pattern can you make that movement? So I'm gonna give you a quick example just to show you what I mean, all right? And this is how gymnasts train, a lot of professional athletes train like this, but normal people can use this to actually produce amazing results and actually heal a lot of their body's aches, pains, and injuries. So if I were to talk about a push-up, right? Most people I say do push-ups, they say I can't do a push-up. But you could probably do some variation of a push-up. Here's an easy one. Putting your hands on the back of a nice sturdy chair and doing push-ups like this, right? Makes the push-up a whole lot easier because the majority of your weight is on your heels, or your toes, rather than your hands. Okay, that's a little too easy for you. Um, maybe if that's too hard for you, you can do it on a wall too. Make it even easier, okay? Now, if that's too easy, you could do it on the back of a couch like this. See, it's a little bit lower. I could do my push-ups like this, okay? If that's still too easy for you, you can come all the way down to the ground. You could do it on your knees. Squeeze those glutes and you could go boom. Do your push-ups on your knees. If that's still too easy for you, you can come down with your knees off the ground and then come up with your knees on the ground. And then you can move to a regular push-up and then you can increase the speed, you can add claps to it, whatever. So ultimately, what are we doing that whole time? We're doing a push-up, right? But we're doing different variations that are each a little bit harder than the last one. And here's the real magic of this. When you do a slightly harder variation of the push-up, what's gonna happen is you're gonna recruit more muscles to be able to do that movement, more coordination, more balance, more of your physical energy needs to get dedicated to it to actually accomplish that movement. So instead of focusing on how high your heart rate is or, or how much did you sweat during that workout, what I like to focus on is over time, how consistent can you be exercising and how much progress can you make sophisticating the movements that you're practicing? Because when you do, your body will change and you won't have to think about it. Like, have you ever met anybody who could do 20 push-ups that probably didn't look great and feel great, right? It's probably not likely. So instead of worrying about what's on the scale um, or, or you know, how much you sweat or how fast your heart's beating, try to just worry about mastering the movements and over time, making those movements a little bit harder and a little bit harder and a little bit harder. And that triggers the body to adapt and change to feel better and look better at the same time. So. Um, that's a long way to say I think that our workouts are the best out there. Um, I think it's, it's designed on the way that I used to personally train people, which is all this, this um, progressions, movement progressions, and I think it's, uh, it can make a big difference in a lot of people's lives. So um, if you want to give those workouts a shot, you can check out weshape.com backslash challenge. We're doing the 30-day Feel Better Challenge. So you get workouts for 30 full days that are personalized along to you, live coaching calls, access to our community, chance to win a bunch of prizes. So go check that out. We're going to wrap up this video right now. But I've got uh, a couple people right here. So what do we got? Jill Weber on Facebook. All right, Jill, we are going to hook you up with free entry to the 30-day Feel Better Challenge. Thanks for jumping on the live call. Really appreciate it. Thanks for posting the question. OK, now we're jumping over to TikTok. We got Fancy Nancy Yo7. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Nancy. Thanks for posting a question. And we're also gonna hook you up with a free entry to the challenge. Um, if you're fancy Nancy07 or Jill Weber, please DM us and we'll get you set up, okay? Uh, one more, and this is the last one. Brrr, drum roll, please, on YouTube. Nikki Nitz, she on, she's on YouTube right now. Um, shoot us an email, support at weshape.com, because I don't think you can DM us on, on YouTube, um, and we'll get you guys set up. So, Jill Weber on Facebook. Fancy Nancy Yo7 on TikTok. <laughs> nice name, by the way. And Nikki Nitz on YouTube. And we're going to hook you guys up the challenge. Um, if you guys didn't make that cut right there for the freeze, check out weshape.com backslash challenge. Otherwise, I'm going to be back on Monday, 3 p.m. again, to do more live Q&A. So come early. Make sure you get your questions in there quickly. You might get a free access to the challenge. And I'll definitely do my best to answer all your questions.
All right, thank you guys so much again. Hope you have an excellent day, and I hope you focus on moving better in your body so that you can feel better in your body. All right, I'll see you guys on Monday.